Good afternoon. I am Malenz, and I come from the richest country in the world. It is located in the richest continent in the world, in the west of the richest continent. My country is called Sierra Leone. On the surface, we are blessed with infinite beauty and abundance of flora and fauna. producing the most exquisite harvest of coffee, cocoa, fruits, vegetables, and caoutchouc. You name it, we've got it. We also have diverse wildlife and ma vast marine resources. And waterfalls and rivers that run into the most beautiful beaches. The land is golden, literally, a true paradise. Which, of course, is inhabited by the most beautiful souls. We have a very strong cultural heritage. In fact, Sierra Leone had the first sub-Saharan university. Prior to that, there was one in the kingdom of Timbuktu, which was the first university in the world, succeeding the great Gnostic schools of Egypt and Osiris. On a deeper level, we are blessed with the real treasures, the kings and queens of this world desire. This was the largest alluvial diamond ever found. It weighs almost a thousand carats, 969 to be precise. This beauty was found by an old lady in her backyard about two years ago, 125 carats. Some people mine gold in their backyards. That's quite common. Besides gold and diamonds, we have about 20 precious minerals that have been discovered as of today. We recently started extracting huge petroleum reserves that have been discovered. We have platinum, ilminite to make titanium, rutile to coat jets, iron ore, the largest iron ore deposits in Africa, the third largest in the world. Tantalite, also known as coltan, used in your mobile phones and computers, bauxite for aluminium production, zinc, chrome ore, copper, coal, phosphates, potassium, salt, lead, granite, asbestos, nickel, zircon. Furthermore, we have exquisite timber like mahogany, antique, and we have the most beautiful stems in the world. <laughs> Of course, the West needs Africa's resources most desperately to power airplanes, cell phones, computers, and engines. And the golden diamonds, of course, a status symbol to determine their powers by decor and to give value to their currencies. One thing that keeps me puzzled despite having studied finance and economics at the world's best universities, the following question remains unanswered. Why is it that 5,000 units of our currency is worth one unit of your currency, where we are the ones with the actual gold reserves? It's quite evident that the aid is in fact not coming from the West to Africa, but from Africa to the Western world. The Western world depends on Africa, in every possible way, since alternative resources are scarce out here. So how does the West ensure that the free aid keeps coming? By systematically destabilizing the wealthiest African nations and their systems, and all that backed by huge PR campaigns. Leaving the entire world under the impression that Africa is poor and dying and merely surviving on the mercy of the West. 
Well done, Oxfam, UNICEF, Red Cross, Life Aid, and all the other organizations that continuously run multi-million dollar advertisement campaigns depicting charity porn to sustain that image of Africa globally. Ad campaigns paid for by innocent people under the impression to help with their donations. While one hand gives under the flashing lights of cameras, the other takes in the shadows. We all know the dollar is worthless, while the euro is merely charged with German intellect and technology, and maybe some Italian pasta. How can one expect donations from nations that have so little? It's super sweet of you to come with your colored paper in exchange for our golden diamonds. But instead, you should come empty-handed, filled with integrity and honor. We want to share with you our wealth and invite you to share with us. The perception is that a healthy and striving Africa would not disperse its resources as freely and cheaply, which is logical. Of course, it would instead sell its resources at world market prices which in turn would destabilize and weaken Western economies, established on the post-colonial free meal system. Last year, the IMF reports that six out of 10 of the world's fastest growing economies are in Africa, measured by their GDP growth. The French Treasury, for example, is receiving about 500 billion dollars, year in, year out, in foreign exchange reserves from African countries based on colonial debt they forced them to pay. Former French President Jacques Chirac stated in an interview recently that we have to be honest and acknowledge that a big part of the money in our banks comes precisely from the exploitation of the African continent. In 2008, he stated that without Africa, France will slide down in the rank of a third world power. This is what happens in the human world, the world we have created. Have you ever wondered how things work in nature? One would assume that in evolution, the fittest survives. However, in nature, any species that over, is over hunting Overexploiting the resources they depend on as nourishment, natural selection would sooner or later take the predator out because it offsets the balance. Now that I shared my, my perspective with you, I would like to share my initiatives with you. As a Sierra Leonean, I'm a diamond expert. I find them in the rough. What nature created from the darkest substance under the influence of heat and pressure transforms into the strongest, most brilliant rocks. These rocks have the consistency to stem an entire nation. These will be our future leaders. Please meet the Folanger Creative Collective I formed with 21 street kids that were often and displaced as a result of the Sierra Leonean Civil War and ended up living in the street as early as age three, growing up as outlaws of society. A name Timothy, but me gangster name na Ifim. I lost my mother and father during the civil war in Sierra Leone. I was brought up by my grandmother in the village. 
at the age of five years of age. Yeah. So this time I might have treat me. Even put poison for me. And I chop for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This name is to in my life. I demand the formula on this. Yes, I want the first man who begin lock on this. The other gangster gangster the Kaisai now on this. And now on this is it now. The team, old man, fearful of the team. You get the hard way. You get the short way. The soft way na for good teeth, the hard way na for good tooth na of cut, the tooth for people le, or it will do teeth for people. Le. If you're not strong na the streets, you go, you go die before time, or either you come out bad before time. Yes. 2001, I come on the streets, I did that, I do them bad, I did thief, I did job phone, I did all them bad life. Till 2010, I'm um, can shoot my lens. From the street, he take me to school. He go put me in a school. I did live fine now. Then, me, me own thing what I want to do in the future. I want to study law. I get that determination they always. So, I want to become a lawyer. Me future than me future than the. My future plan, see what they will do for help me own family. Because I don't decide to say I want to go to school for be international businessman. So me, some of me company the way they live their way world life they are. I wish them back would change like me. For let them go they left them style yeah. Let them imagine say all the wolf style are not fine for mortal man. Mortal man, a more possible for the reason and wish for better future in this world. These guys are my biggest inspiration. Destiny brought us together. I met them by a chance encounter in 2010. 2011, they all started living with me. 21 in number. Wonderful things happen when creatives meet with mutual respect. How did we go about it? Creativity. That same creativity that ensured their survival under the most adverse circumstances in the streets is channeled into outlets such as art, music, film, and fashion. They made the impossible possible, from Lime Base in Sierra Leone to luxury fashion stores in Paris, New York, and Berlin. This is what we created single-handedly without a single cent in donations, without running water, without electricity. Most of them not being able to read and write at the time when I met them. And now, some of them studying law, engineering, being filmmakers, and so on. This is made with pure energy, inspiration, and love in free tone. With creativity and passion as the sole ingredient, we participate in a global market of international competition and find our way into the world's most exclusive department stores, onto the bodies of the world's fashion icons, 
and into the most distinguished art collections and ex exhibitions in Berlin, Paris, New York, Miami. A proven concept that produced self-sufficient individuals financing their own education into lawyers, engineers, filmmakers, and artists within only three years. Concept based on mutual respect and sharing, a blueprint that can be replicated anywhere, under any circumstances. I only had the vision and the insight to recognize diamonds in the rough and was determined to prove to the world that the absence of donation produces quality in a self-sufficient manner. I believe charity merely creates inferiority and dependency. I want to serve as a bridge between two worlds I call home to facilitate a fair exchange between two contrasting worlds that become powerful once balance is reinstalled. It's not about charity, it's about charity. Today I invite you to change your perspective, own your visions of a brighter world, never see lack, see abundance, always, everywhere, and watch the universe conspire. Don't focus on problems, but on the solution. Remember, our perception of any given situation is the only thing that determines the outcome. I am a lens. I am German, too. Change your channel. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. Thank you for listening.